please note that eye protection is required for all participants in this project because it is possible to make LEDs explode. If you've built LED circuits before, you may know that they require a current limiting resistor to prevent too much current from flowing through and burning out the LED. Normally, for a given battery voltage and LED color, you would do a little bit of math to choose the appropriately sized resistor to get the desired current flowing through the LED, and we have an entire video series that shows you how to do that linked in the description of this one. In this project, we're going to do something a little different and intentionally burn out some LEDs by connecting progressively smaller resistors. There are some important safety notes to remember before we continue. Again, make sure you have eye protection on, and the components in the circuit can get hot, so after conducting a test, you should use tweezers to remove them from the breadboard and not your fingers. If at any point you need to just disconnect power from the entire circuit, use tweezers to remove one of the battery wires. Let's take a look at how to set this experiment up on a breadboard. If you don't know how to use a breadboard, we have instructions for that linked in the video description. The circuit is powered by a 9 volt battery with a snap connector that has positive and negative wires. The positive or red wire goes to one of the breadboard's power or positive buses, and the negative or black wire goes to one of the negative or ground buses. The battery is in series with a switch that I can use to turn the LED on and off. This switch has three pins. The middle pin is connected to the LED with a jumper wire. One of the outer pins is connected to the power bus, and the other outer pin is not connected to anything. So when I slide this switch back and forth, it toggles or changes which of the two outer pins the middle pin is connected to. So when the switch is in the up position, the middle pin is connected to the power bus, and when the switch is in the down position, the middle pin is not connected to anything, and the LED turns off. The LED itself straddles the gap in the middle of the breadboard with one leg connected to the same row as this jumper wire. Note that LEDs are polar, meaning they have a positive side and a negative side. The positive side is the side with the slightly longer leg, so that's the side I need to have connected to the switch in this circuit. So I have the longer LED leg here, the shorter LED leg over here, and then the LED is in series with the current limiting resistor, so one leg of the resistor goes in the same row as the LED, and the other leg of the resistor goes in the ground bus, completing the circuit. To figure out how much current the LEDs can handle before they burn out, we are going to use a multimeter. If you've never used a multimeter before, we have a tutorial video linked in the description of this video. And we are actually going to use a little trick with the multimeter. We aren't going to measure the current directly. We are instead going to measure the voltage drop across the resistor and calculate the current using Ohm's law. I'll explain that in a minute. We could put the multimeter in series with the other components in the circuit and measure the current directly, but if you do that, you run a higher risk of blowing your multimeter's fuse as you get to smaller and smaller resistors and higher and higher currents. By measuring the voltage across the resistor, we eliminate the risk of blowing the fuse, and then we just need to do a little math to calculate the current. To measure the voltage drop across the resistor, I'm going to set my multimeter to measure DC voltage in the 20 volt range. I'm going to plug the black probe into the COM port and the red probe into the voltage measurement port. I'm then going to use alligator clips to connect to my multimeter probes because that will let me set it up for hands-free operation instead of needing to hold the probes with my hands. And I'm going to connect one of the alligator clips to one leg of the resistor and then the other alligator clip to the other leg of the resistor. When I turn my circuit on, I should now get a positive voltage reading on my multimeter. If you get a negative reading, that just means you have your probe switched, so you can either just ignore the negative sign or swap your probes. The equation for Ohm's law is voltage equals current times resistance, so to solve for current, you can just rearrange this equation to current equals voltage divided by resistance. I'm not going to go through the math or an example in this video, but we have that in the written instructions linked in the description. What you can now do is start with a large resistor like 1 kilo ohm and work your way down to progressively smaller resistors. As you do so, measure the voltage and use it to calculate the current, and observe what physically happens to the LED. It can be interesting to give yourself sort of a reverse engineering challenge here to design the most spectacular failure. Normally, you would use the engineering design process to help prevent a device from failing, but here you can try to get the biggest flash or even explosion out of your LED. Depending on your resistor value and battery voltage, sometimes the LED might just flash quickly and immediately burn out, and sometimes you might get a longer, slower burn. 
you might see different results with different LED colors and even different manufacturers, so there's plenty of room to experiment. For written instructions for this project and over a thousand other fun projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the links in the video description, our YouTube channel, and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.